Hey guys, this is Vernier for Cardrunners.com, bringing you another episode of Building Good Poker Study Habits, 10 Steps to More Mindful Poker to Kick Off 2014 for you. So today we're going to talk about step number six, which is to analyze five or more hands where you played 7-7 seven, seven through Jack-Jack without initiative. So in Hold a Manager, I'm going to bring up the filters, and I'm going to bring up I'm going to select whole card filters, select none, and then I'm going to select sevens through jacks. And then I want for under basic filters, preflop action facing hero will be one razor or one razor and, well, one razor and razor plus collars since we want to play without initiative. And I, let me take a look. Okay. And I think that's, uh, I think that should be good. So let's take a look at some of these hands and let's take a look at what happened. So the first one is, let's bring it up. I'm at a rush table, have a, Opening from under the gun, I don't know too much about the player, but from under the gun, I'm just going to end up calling. And the flop comes 3-6 queen. He checks. I'm going to bet 5 into 750, which I think is fine. I think I'm going to, I think I have the best hand very frequently here. So I'm just going to get value. On the turn, I'm not sure exactly why he's checking, so I'm just going to check behind. And the jack comes on the river, and he bets 14 into 1750. And I just end up folding. So without knowing any more about the villain, his line of check call the flop, and then lead pretty strong on the river, I'm not exactly sure what he has. He can definitely check call the flop with ace-king. He could have a very strong hand, like I said, and just be trapping. But... I don't think he's going to uh, check call the flop with a hand like pocket nines and then fire that river. So I like the way I played the hand. I'm going to bring up, I made a spreadsheet. So the date of the hand, I'm going to catalog it. It was on the 4th. So 1, 4, 2013. My hand was 10, 10. Villain's hand, I don't know. Villain type, unknown. Notes. Villain check called dry queen six three rainbow flop and then fired big on uh, Jack River King on turn. So I I think I played the hand fine. All right, the next hand. Let's close this one out and let's go to hold a manager. So the next hand looks like I have flopped a set. Let's see what happened. Raise from the button. The guy's playing pretty short and he raises pot. And I'm not exactly sure what the best play is here, but I might be willing to gamble it with him for stacks. At the time I called, I'm not sure why. All right, so I flopped a set. He bets $3, and I min-raise it just because I'm out of position, and I want to take the initiative in the hand, but I'm super strong, so I don't, I don't want to scare him off. All right, the turn is a 9, which completes if he had the queen-jack gut shot, then he got there. I'm going to bet again, and now I'm just going to put all the money in, and he flopped middle set. So... The, the one thing that I would be interested in is my preflop play there. 1-5, 2013, my hand is pocket eights, villain's hand is 10-10, villain type, loose, aggressive, over how many hands? Looks like over 37 hands. So I'll just say 37-26, 37-26 over... I think I said 37 hands. Just want to make sure. Yep. Over 37 hands. Uh, how to play 8-8 eight, eight, 
preflop versus lag 50 big blind stack who pots the button. I would like to work out some math behind that and see whether I, I'm definitely not folding, but whether three betting or flatting is the best, the best play. And I'm thinking three betting will be, but like I said, I'm not sure. All right. So let's keep going. Obviously post flop is totally fine. And I actually like my check raise there. All right. Let's take a look at this hand. So I have a 32 19 player who min raises the cutoff. I've got tens. I'm going to three bet him and take initiative. And I'm not sure why it has that hand. Oh, maybe I should have said that I don't three bet. So I'm going to skip that because I, I do take the initiative there. So maybe I'll change the filter and the preflop th filter did three bet will be false. So I will add that. Now I know I will not have initiative. Jacks, that should be a good one. Here, I, th I preflop at the spot where I think three betting could be fine, but I think there's some merits in calling as well. If if I three bet and then I'm four bet, then I'm kind of in a bad situation and I'm probably gonna have to leg up the hand and I don't want to do that. But if I flat, then my jacks still have a lot of value. So I chose to flat here. I check, everybody checks around and I expect that I'm gonna lead the turn, which I do and everybody calls and the reverse a king. Pretty bad card for me, especially since the backdoor spades get there. And I'm just gonna be looking to check fold. So pretty much all the draws get there on the river and I decide to check fold. So my hand, this is on the 28th, 1, 28, 2013, Jack, Jack, villain's hands, I don't know. Villain type, tag and nitty. Let's see how many hands the villain had. Uh, 17, six over 39 hands. 17, six over 39 hands. And I want to say that preflop chance to squeeze, but I choose to flat post flop is standard. Yeah, I think post flop is very standard just the way that uh, played out. Um, I think checking the flop is, you know, perfectly standard. The turn, I like leading the turn. I've got, I likely have the best hand and on the river, there's, there's just nothing I could do other than check fold with everything getting there and me having a third pair on a straight. And I know I have some blockers to the straight, but just because I have them doesn't mean that someone can't have a flush or better, or I mean, two pair, like I, I don't beat anything other than a bluff. Let's take a look at the. This hand that I lost with nines, I I think this is another close one. I I think three betting could be could be okay here. Uh, the guy's playing twenty four twenty. I don't like folding again. His stack size is kind of weird, and I end up just check calling the flop. Just gonna check call the turn. And he ended up having King Jack. So was calling down. There's a lot of stuff he can pick up on the turn that I think he'll fire again. So I expect to have the best hand frequently. So let's make a note about that. So my hand here is on the 28th, 1, 28, 2013. 9-9, nine, nine, villain, king, jack, villain type, short stack, called to streets with second pair, 
lost to King Jack on Jack 5-4. I think it was 5-4-3 or 5-4-2. Let's take a look. Yeah, 5-4-3. Heart, heart, run out. And I want to make a note how to play this preflop. And this is what I'm starting to see a theme as to how to, how to kind of play these, like especially eights and nines. Because I think with tens and jacks, I'm just going to three item preflop and get them in. But with eights and nines, it's it's a lot more tricky. So that is something that's coming out of uh, this video that I would like to examine later. Let's take a look at one more hand that I ended up uh, losing. This pocket tens hand. All right, so the villain leads, I call. He leads again for like half paw and I call again. <laughs> now I feel like he's milking me. Now he could have I'm trying to think if he would bet nines here. I don't think he would bet nines, and it's just such a it's such a milk bet. I have no idea what he has, but I think I should call here. I ended up folding, and I don't like it. I I'm getting a little bit of a three to one, so I think he can call here. But then again, I I just don't know what he's betting with. Um, so this is a hand where I could go through and put the range of hands that he could have. I don't think he has a stone called bluff because it looks like I'm calling down. So my hand kind of looks like nines or tens or maybe a hand like queen jack. I could certainly have a hand like queen jack here. So uh, I am unsure about his betting. So, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm he's either putting forth a, a very cheap multi-street bluff or he he's just milking me. And from my experience, he's going to be milking me there. So 1, 28, 2013. My hand was pocket tens. Villain hand is I, I don't know. Compa, competent tag. Villain bets three streets on jack 8-8. Eight, eight. Uh, the turn and river were blanks. 6-3. Board. What is his bluffing range for the triple barrel? I think that's the key to the hand is when he bets three streets like that, he could have like, does he really bet 9-10 for half pot? His his bet sizing kind of confuses me too. What's his bluffing range for the triple barrel? Betting one half PSB every time. So that's another hand that I would want to look into a little bit more and try to figure out what exactly is... That's the question that I have on this hand is... What is his bluffing range? I don't see it as being. I don't see a lot of hands in his in his range. Like even with nine ten, and like I said, I've I've got two blockers for that. Is is he really triple barreling that and betting half pot on the river? The half pot on the river just seems like a milking bet. But then again, he's getting a pretty good price on the bluff. So without knowing anymore, I think a fold there is fine on the river. It looks like he's going for three streets of thin value, but it's it's still kind of confusing. So I would keep doing that, and then I would, I would try to get these questions answered, uh, and that's definitely going to help me become a stronger player. So please let me know if you have any questions or comments, and for callrounders.com, this has been Vernier. Good luck at the tables.